I've looked all around, and it seems like this area of the castle has the best shot at getting me any progress. I mean, it is also included in the map that I got from Hammer last time, so I, I guess that's that would indicate this is where I'm supposed to go? Ah, who knows. Well, anyway, I also switched up my equipment. I'm now using Hammer's namesake Hammer, which is pretty good. Very, very high attack power, but slow. Even slower than the the broadsword, which shared the same sort of moveset. But hey, I mean, I guess you can't say it's ineffective if I'm killing enemies in one hit. Other than that, I have also done the re requisite grinding to get every one of the souls that you possibly can at this point in the game. Including Peeping Eye. Identifies breakable walls. A rare drop, but I think one that's going to be important over the course of the game. Besides, uh, the yellow souls, the, the passive ones, it's mostly just a lot of stat increasing stuff, which is nice, but constitution plus four is not really going to be doing anything really great for me, especially if I'm already killing enemies in one hit. And also some gimmicky type of stuff? Sure, stronger when poisoned. Nah, peeping eye is what I'm going to be using. And then I, I had to use flying armor there just to even get over that gap, and I'm probably going to have to switch out to this soon enough because I need the mobility, but uh, for right now, bone pillar? Sure. <laughs> I mean, like, like I said, it's going to be short-lived. Eventually, I'll get something to replace uh, the, the, well, so much for using the hammer, I suppose. Eventually, I'll get something to replace the, the uh, flying armor, so I won't need to use that at all, but I think that's still quite a way off. Oh, well. Oh, no, it's the lance. I, uh, I was thinking, I didn't know. That. <laughs> well, if you know the war spear from Dead Cells, here's its inspiration. I don't like, much like the war spear, I don't like the moveset of this thing. It's awkward to use and works at a weird angle, but I, I suppose that's why I have the other souls kind of to help me out here, too. Like the Tiny Devil. Tiny Devil only gets to shoot one of those sights. I shoot three and they home in on enemies. It's kind of why it's uh, one of my favorite souls that I've gotten so far. Even though, like I said, I'm going to be switching out an awful lot to kind of see everything that Arya has to offer. I mean, there's certainly a lot of souls here and if you're doing a lot of collection of it, it it's not like you're going to be able to... You'll have a large amount of them to switch out to kind of experiment around with, figure out what the gimmick gimmicks are. So, um, Jay, you happen to be like a... You, do you happen to know Hammer kind of hanging around here? Because, like... You have almost the exact same face. <laughs> it's almost as if somebody's reusing assets right now. Also, 1999. You'd think that in in 36 years that you would you wouldn't still be going by a, a single initial. Hey, Mr. J. Please, no need to be so formal. <laughs> I love the dialogue in this game, by the way. <laughs> especially, especially since he has magical powers. Well, I mean, it's no surprise that uh, Soma would have dark powers. I mean, Genya does too. Graham presumably does. Although, we haven't really seen him do much of anything. He just was talking about how... He had uh, connections to the underworld, and of course knew a lot about the, the Nostradamus pro prophecy of 1999 that talked about Dracula's defeat. <laughs> what a plot this game has. I mean, to reiterate, it's like, well, okay, so back in the... Dracula resurrects every hundred years. D -d -d people were sick of that, so they literally took an army in and... You know, killed him for good and sealed his castle in an eclipse. But of course, you know, hey, sealing in all video games never actually works, so we're back here. Although it's kind of questionable as to why Soma's here. Like, uh, Genya Arikado is here because I guess he and uh, Yoko Belnades 
are, uh, are kind of investigating it, trying to figure out maybe how you can defeat this thing forever rather than just sealing it so every 35 years or... Or whenever there's an eclipse. I guess I don't really know how... Hey, cool. Yeah, sure, I'll switch that out. I guess I don't know how often eclipses appear, let's be honest. <laughs> you know, stop him for good for good. What did I get? It was a doll, right? I mean, Belnades being a... Oh, it's a little Mina, isn't it? <laughs> uh, but anyway... What was I even saying? Yeah, stop him for good, for good. Belnades being, I guess, of the the line of of the the famous ma magicians that have existed in the Castlevania series ever since Castlevania Three, and Genya being a new character, definitely a new character whom we've never seen before. Definitely not. Oh, and that one looks like Soma. This is cute. <laughs> Well, before I go into the boss, I'll kind of like screw around out here first because I want to see if there's any more uh, fun stuff with all the dolls. Oh, and I guess they just attack towards the direction of this. Is this going to be good for a boss? Uh, probably not. It's fun, though. <laughs> well, anyway, then Graham's here, I guess, to try to inherit the power of Dracula. And Soma just kind of appeared and was revealed to have dark powers alongside Mina. Maybe it's not, uh, maybe it's not Soma that's important, but Mina, and Soma just happens to have dark powers. Okay, come on, you know, you know where the plot is going here. It's not like this is very complicated. <laughs> and then Jay's also here, because, you know. He thought he would be able to remember stuff if he did that? I'm sure it'll eventually be explained in time. As for now... It's a big golem. Normal golems, you don't get this sort of incredible value out of. This is the kind that you pay like an extra dollar for, but I mean, come on, you can fill this guy up with so much soda. Vomits out rocks too. Um, I don't think Killer Doll is gonna be very good. Throws katanas? Sure. Although, I think I'm also probably... I mean, I guess I can hit this with the lance. I don't like it, though. <laughs> Thus far, the bosses have not been particularly impressive. In fact, between, like, this guy and the Tower Knight... And the, the Creaking Skull, the first boss of the game, it's like... It, it's a lot of just kind of, like, slow dudes who... Are still a little bit difficult to deal with just because of how the... Controls are a little clunky. Dead cells the same, speaking of which. Slow big guys. Finally. Yeah, look at it go. That's a Suchinoko. Um, in fact, I think that if I do use the Tiny Devil, which like I said does have homing, well, uh, if I instead use, I don't know, the Winged Skeleton? That has kind of a weird arc to it. Snake of Legend. <laughs> also a surprising amount of health on that thing. Yeah, I remember this thing. I mean, it's like a, a fat snake. A very... Very popular type of uh, uh, Japanese cryptid to appear in, in that usually uh, that appears in a lot of games. I always remember the one from from Metal Gear Solid Three being an entire like side quest to try to to carry that thing to the end of the game. But it's pretty fun. Well, like yeah, of course it's going to be appearing in here as you know we sort of have like a very supernatural like pseudo gothic type of theme going on and this is technically taking place in japan inexplicably so why not <laughs> why not oh come on i just beat a regular goal you really think you're gonna be doing anything get out of here evil butcher who i guess has been quite busy looking at the background now hmm oh yeah now i got the ability to slide, which is normally like, 
you would think kind of a standard ability in a lot of uh, in a game like this, but nope, you gotta wait quite some time to even get this thing. Uh, well, in the meantime, uh, let's continue on with. I could switch out to something a little bit more interesting. How about Skull Archer? Sure. Bought a few of those guys at the beginning of the game. It's slow and does not do as much damage as I'm. Hey, it's the first boss! Where's Castlemania? Still as difficult as ever. <laughs> you know, I never actually got the soul from that boss, so I guess it's because it's going to be appearing as a regular enemy now. Which I think, I kind of vaguely remember that's how it worked. I remember in Dawn of Sorrow, you pretty much always got... You pretty much always got um, souls from bosses after you beat them. So, yeah, not getting it this time would have been otherwise pretty suspect. I don't like this one. <laughs> I'm going to admit right now. Let's, let's switch it out for something immediately. Did I? No, I, I looked at Throw's Katanas. I never actually used it because I wanted to try and get the Suchinoko. It's just a, a straight throw. You throw out a Katana. <laughs> you know, I said there were a bunch of like the things with different gimmicks here. I think maybe later in the series they were a little bit more original with... Uh, what stuff did what? That said, 500 gold while nice. I don't think it was quite worth this trip in here. Hmm. Maybe I should just be using this. Or switch it out again. Like I said, I've gotten a whole bunch of different abilities now. It's like, I think you know what a flamethrower looks like. So, throw that away and then see if... Oh, I gotta be standing on the ground to actually use it. Well, that makes it a little less good. Ah, it does a lot of extra damage, I see. Or outright kills enemies. That works too. Winged skeletons, needless to say, not really looking for uh, souls from those guys. Well, I suppose this only works on specific enemies, now does it? Well, it does good damage when it does work. So, maybe like Creek and Skull? Nope. Not at all. That's the old uh, that's the old issue when it comes to using a lot of status effects, where if enemies aren't really affected by that status, you kind of feel like there's no point in using it most of the time. Which I would say is absolutely true here. Ah, well, that said, I mean, it still does do damage by itself. A Kutal, sure. A nice basic thing, but hey, if it does good damage, I am perfectly willing to be using it. Also, now that I have the ability to... Th that does not look like it's part of the foreground, but sure. Uh, now that I have the ability to slide, there was that one book down in the the study that I should be able to... to go and, and get. I think that's the only thing that really requires sliding that I've seen thus far in the game, so... Important to remember, but not necessarily, like, something that I am... I think is going to be super important. Ah, these things. One of those appeared in the Manticore Room, but the Manticore Room, of course, is much, much larger and easier to fight dudes. How is that light fixture so much fancier than the other ones I've seen around here? Everything else has been just, like, gigantic torches, but... That one was like a proper... I don't know. It was very similar to like Dracula's guest house. So... Back in, back in uh, Symphony of the Night. So, I mean, it's like... I, I guess it's a little bit more modern? Ah, yes. Uh, it's gonna take a while to go walk back that one area, though. So, I'll just do that off screen. I think it'll be the, the easier way to kind of get that done. Oh, come on. There. Stupid haunted swords. Uh, a standard part of the Castlevania series, certainly. Usually never a boss by itself, but a mini-boss, at least. Or at least one enemy that you're only going to find uh, by itself. I suppose makes something of a difference. 
Durga. Yeah, I said last time that Durga gave you like an ability. That was Dawn of Sorrow. That was definitely Dawn of Sorrow because this, the one I'm using right now is the Durga Soul. So it's like, yeah, clearly not a, uh, not one that is allowing me to break the game. <laughs> oh, well. This is a good thing that I went down to the basement first. I didn't really think that was going to make all that much of a difference, but I guess I did, in fact, need it to continue on the game. Ah! Perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for by having the peeping eye. So what do I... I guess throws bones upwards? Well, there's no way I'm going to be able to get up there for right now, but at least I'll be able to find it easily in the next area. Persephone. I think she wasn't she called like Alice in other games. Maybe that's also like game subsequent to this one because I remember that being here. Because I remember like yeah the the maid that hits you with martial arts was uh, was a thing. High potion. Finally, starting to really move up in the world. And then. Proper witch, but also ninja suit. Which, yeah, you would assume ninja suit. Much better, in fact. It's got the little uh, symbol for ninja down there on it, too. There we are. <laughs> Still transforms into a cat, though, like the student witches. It's just, uh, it's a cat wearing a hat. Which means that it has an increased amount of magical power. As all hat-wearing characters do. I mean, I always, I, I've said before, I will still stick to it if an if a enemy or character in a game wears a silly hat, and I would count a witch hat as being at least somewhat silly. It instantly endears me to them, regardless of what their character is otherwise. All right, let's switch out the soul for something that's going to be a little bit more effective here. Uh, throws axe. I already showed that one. Flying crows. That sounds fun. You no, know, it has a really weird, like, circular type of movement to it. All right, I... Hmm, maybe it'll be good. No, can't do much of that, much of anything with that right now. No, I know I can definitely sit in that chair. That is like a standard thing in in these sort of games, but I don't know how to do it. Come on now. There's nothing even else in that room. I suppose it's an easy way to try to get the Persephone soul when the time comes, but you know. I ain't gonna be doing that grinding right now. I think it's the more important bit to understand. All right, let's uh, Catablepus instead switch out. No, no, I already did the Bone Pillar. Giant Ghost? Seems pretty straightforward. Oh, and it actually, I don't have to hold it down to get it to be used. Given that there's a boss coming up right here, seems like it's probably a good time to be using this. All right, then. All right, well, then I can instead... Well, no, I'll, I'll continue using the blue crow for right now. Not quite as easy as the first head. That said, a cool gimmick for this boss. And you can see the last one in, in there is going to be some kind of, like, dragon, I suppose? Would like to see the, the individual forms have, like, a little bit more... Like a little bit more to do though than just stab me and then summon a couple dragon heads. I mean, I suppose summoning heads is fitting for the for the the type of enemy that I'm fighting. Oh no, it's breathing uh, dust.
and then this should probably be it. Cool. That's actually probably going to be useful, especially given how many souls that I've collected already. But like I said, I think stats are not nearly as important as being able to see the... Or maybe this was the enemy that I was thinking of. Uh, stats are not nearly as important as uh, being able to see breakable walls. Because those things are annoying. I mean, especially when they appear in above or below you. It's like, how are you really going to be able to even... It's like, it, it's, it's difficult to even just, like, find them in the first place. Th to get a, a weapon that will be able to destroy the wall. <laughs> oh, come on now. Kyoma. Kyoma would just be... Uh, I don't know. I should know, but I don't know. Maybe need to have, like, a uh, little bit larger weapon right now. Ah, nope. Ain't doing nothing. Still, I, a, a clever usage of the of the mirrors back there, and that definitely does continue on into Dawn of Sorrow, where there is a boss entirely based around doing that. A pretty fun one, too. I like it, but it is also quite difficult. Comparatively. <laughs> I suppose... It's like, yeah, normal mode. I was told in the in the comments for the last video that it's like normal mode is not really is is Iron Plate? I mean, is that gonna be better than Ninja Armor, let's be honest. Yeah, I was told that it's like hard mode in this game, not nearly as difficult as hard mode in in like other games, especially the Order of Ecclesia and Portrait of Ruin, which are the ones that I'm most familiar with, of course. So, oh, come on, <laughs> no, this is hitbox. Hmm. But yeah, I'll try it out. Blue Crow already getting kind of stale after all. Yeah, that's the one I'm most familiar with. So it's like, you know, skull archer skeleton. I cannot find this thing. Would I have just gotten it? Oh, disc armor right there. Oh, it's sort of like a yo-yo type of ability. It does good damage, too, so I'll give it that. And what appears to be a pretty fancy-looking sword that does good damage, but how does it actually work? Could be worse. It could be the lance. <laughs> ah, Undyne, sure. I suppose there's nothing else around here that requires me to use the peeping eye, so I might as well equip that one up right now. Much better. I don't know how many things are actually going to be, uh, you know, susceptible to poison, but I might as well keep using this because, hey, fresh weapon. The other one getting old. I reduced for quick sale, as you know. So yeah, this will be the uh, this will be helpful for some of the earlier areas where I couldn't really. I, I was trying to figure out like those boats and if they moved or something. No, <laughs> I hate this hitbox. I was trying to figure out if those like boats moved or whatever. It's like no, you're just supposed to walk on top of the water. It also works like semi-solid platforms where you can just fall down into it. A very contrived type of way to very contrived type of way to uh, create an obstacle there, but whatever, it's... We are talking like a Metroid-style game, contrived types of, uh, types of obstacles that you just need a very specific ability to do stuff with are this game's specialties. Oh, you're supposed to use the Ice Beam, the, the least useful beam in the entirety of the game. Especially compared to, like, the Hyper Beam. And that's the... Come on. And that's the the weakness of the Metroid. Of the Metriod. Okay, that's, that's nice, at least. Get as many of these things as possible, and then... Should be... Hey, come on. Should be absolutely no problem at all to... 
to kind of move around the castle, unlike what I've been doing before. Kind of surprised that uh, you don't go down in a single hit. Or maybe it is going down in a single hit? No, there we go. That was definitely death animation if I've ever seen one. Yokoso. Anything else I'm missing out on here? Or just gonna continue on. Looks like there's not not much else to do, I'd say. Kind of surprised that I have not yet gotten a Persephone uh, soul, considering how many of these things there are around here. Are these even supposed to be like? I, I suppose I can look at the the enemy bestiary. Yeah, missing the siren stuff. Also missing like evil fish, but. Uh... A demon maid. Not the most demonic, I'll say that. You know what I'd say demonic? This character right here. Man, she was like Alucard's, um... Wasn't Lilith Alucard's mother back in, uh... Back in Symphony of the Night, and now she's just been demoted to, uh, Jobber Demon? Hmm, unfortunate. There you go. Uh, eats through the mana pretty quickly, but it's still fairly effective, I'd say. I'm gonna... I'm, you know, I'm just noticing right now, it's like... We'll put a door directly above a pit. Dracula, I guess. It's like that's kind of the answer to everything now, isn't it? Anything else for... Hittable walls? Now that I'm in a new area, I should probably switch that back out just to make sure that I uh, am going to be seeing if there's anything special around here. Or is this just... Oh, that just, like, literally led back to the... It's not bad. That just literally led right back to the uh, this area down here. I told you, gotta switch out to, to flying armor very quickly. Well, maybe I might be able to make it from here. True gamer. Okay, back into this area then. So I guess that would be another alternative for a place that I might be able to, to, like, continue on with the game. But, you know, I'm sure I probably need, like, the Undying Soul and everything before, before I'm able to continue on anywhere else past here. That only makes sense. Get out of here, Lilith. The exact sort of thing that I want to use my uh, ridiculous yo-yo blade on. Take too much damage otherwise, and she has like a backdash. That's way too difficult to deal with. I can't do that. Alright, so... There's still like another little area above the, the previous place I was at, but yeah, that was... That was not the one that required the, the peeping eye to see the breakable wall, though. I don't know, this this place seems seems right as far as This place seems right as far as like areas that I want to get to. Also contains ample amount of witches to farm farm out their souls too. Top floor, baby. Is that like I mean I'm only 39% here, so I think I'm probably not gonna be hanging around here for too long. That said, I mean, as you always know, ever since uh, Symphony of the Night, really, it's been... Once you... Oh. Guess that's this area, then. But yeah, ever since Symphony of the Night, there's also, like, your, your upside-down castles and the like. But it does seem likely that I'm supposed to be going over to one of the... the areas that I need the Undying Soul to get into. Top floor is going to have to wait for a bit. So basically, I think... Uh, well, first off, let's see if I can get into this room over here. And if not, I'll cut around. Well, at least I'm able to kill uh, zombies and everything in one hit. Although I think that's actually been true for a while. Okay, well, I'll cut to the point where I find uh, some area that I can use the no new soul for. 
Yeah, okay, this is a little area that I didn't explore very well before. So, oh, <laughs> save point in here. That would have been helpful in the time when I was going through here, but uh, I, I guess, yeah. Also got the, the Ghost Soul equip, which is also another uh, homing one. Does good damage, it seems. It seems. Certainly takes down the Kate Squaddle pretty easily. Which I am, I'm happy about that because, uh. What you got? I, I ha honestly have no idea. Samurai armor, gonna be better than a ninja suit? I don't know. Uh, slightly more strength and attack, slightly less, well, actually a good amount less defense comparatively, so I guess I can really just kind of dump that one right now, not worry too much about it. Who's always putting these doors directly above uh, pits? Oh yeah, waiter skeleton. Getting some curry, and from what I remember, it also gives you the ability to throw curry yourself. That's the attack of its soul. Which is pretty great. I do like that. Just a bunch of flea men in here? Jeez. And also, I guess that's a good amount of gold. Just seeing a single coin on the ground does feel quite uh, disappointing, though, I gotta say. Like, I can't really say I'm too impressed by, by that. It's not quite the same thing as having the gigantic blue bag with a dollar sign on it. You know, the classic uh, burlap sack with a dollar sign that I don't know who in history has ever actually used that, but... Oh, wait, I should probably... Yeah, make sure that I leave at least one for jumping purposes. And then... No. I mean, certainly if you can break it down, it does not come up with a peeping eye, which means you can't. The peeping eye is very comprehensive in its secret finding abilities. I really do just want to kind of kill the <laughs> the uh, waiter skeleton until I get its soul, but I know also that's very boring to do actual grinding on screen, so we're not going to. Okay, it's squad, baby. There. Well, okay, so this was not really anything for uh, progress, but at least it was some new stuff that I hadn't... Uh, completely covered just yet. All right, back to, to cutting around. Okay, this will be one of the areas I can use the Undyne Soul. I already got that one. I don't think you can like sell this unlike in say Bloodstained. Elfin Robe. Sure? Uh, is it necessarily better though? Increased defense, slightly decreased attack. I don't know, ninja suit still seems best, but unfortunately that also means that, uh, yeah, I don't really have too much ability to progress here once again, which means back to cutting. Okay, this would be the other area that I should go to. So what do you got? Is this the actual area? Who knows? There's not really a whole lot of water sections around in the castle. It's mostly just this one. Very fancy boxes to break down. Hmm, strange. Floating garden. I mean, I, it seems like most of the stuff is floating in this castle, but hey. Why does the cockatrices just have like laser eye beams? It doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, well, this is at least a good opportunity to use the, the grenades that I got from the, the zombie soldier. So, why not? Also, a lot of angel statues around here and everything. That's always been one of those things about Dracula. I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be a mockery of, of like, religion or whatever. That he forsook becoming one of the demon dead? But he also always has, like, chapels, and there were stuff like uh, confession booths and stuff like that in previous games. Statues of angels and everything all over the place. Who knows? Ah, oh, yes, the classic representation of Gorgon. A kind of gross, sickly colored. Hey, hey, stop poking me. Uh, a very gross, sickly colored catablepus. Just pokes you and makes you continuously attack. 
which is silly, but you know, well, whatever. Sure, that's fine. I guess this is a little bit different from the wood golem or whatever that I was fighting before now, eh? Man, goes down with some difficulty, but at the same time, it went down, so I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna argue too much. Yes, that's what I remember. Floating gardens are in fact floating, way above the, the map itself. You just kind of teleport around, um, secretly. We also get another one of the wildly different looking moons here. I mean, it makes sense. It's taking place inside of an eclipse. It's not like... It's not like uh, the moon would actually be here. Let's see if I can't find something a little bit better for taking care of you. Girls katanas. Tosses boulders? You know? Maybe. Seems good. Oh, yeah, when I'm not on, on top of... Uh, Come on, Disc Armor. I'm not on top of uh, stairs. It can hit me a lot easier. Man, the werewolf. Back in Symphony of Night, a, a full-fledged boss, I believe. Now demoted down to, to mini-boss. Quite unfortunate, considering it still retains a lot of its cool abilities. It's just, ah, it's a manticore. I hate you. You have wings, but you don't even fly. What's up with that? Well, I'll be getting the soul from that thing eventually, I guess. Really, now? I'll be getting the soul from that eventually now that I have an actual place to go farm it up, but... Oh boy, oh boy. That's gonna be a frustrating thing. 500? Sure. And I'll make sure that I kind of clear out the entire area here. No reason not to. Maybe I'll see something of interest. Although I should probably also throw back on the peeping eye. Speaking of seeing things of interest. Alright. I, I don't know. I don't really remember exactly where you need to go in this area. I think just exploring kind of around the, the large areas that I possibly can seems like the best way to do it. Just the same thing as throwing bones or ah! Well, went down pretty easy, but still. Oh, nice. Then sometimes I got in levels. I mean, needless to say, doing all the grinding that I did, I am pretty well on top of stats as much as I can possibly be. So, yeah, it, that's not really too big of a deal to be leveling up at this point in time. That said, I suppose some enemies are getting kind of tougher. And, you know, really trying to keep on top of of abilities and you know making sure that I'm taking as little damage as possible seems like it could be a prudent idea so not actually like root enemies to the ground or anything because I was kind of expecting that to be a thing with with webs it's kind of how webs do right literally nature's net okay I got plenty of potions here including high potions yeah, sure, whatever. Let's just let's go for it. Uh, you know, Soma said it's like, hey, isn't Dracula's castle in Europe? It's, that is just that is just patently absurd, given what you're seeing right now. It's like, yeah, he's got a whole ton of d d floating gardens.
I mean, you probably shouldn't have allowed him to just walk away like that, but, uh... Ah, fair enough. Whatever. Clock Tower! As I was saying before that, uh, some stuff was like the Clock Tower, but here and now we're really into it. I mean, I do find it interesting that you have, like, two different areas with, uh, church bells and everything like that, and now we got one that has gears all over the place. The way more of the, the traditional type of Clock Tower area, certainly. I don't like this ability. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, Dracula's Castle. Hey, there's classic Medusa heads too. Dracula's Castle, uh, always been described as a creature, well, was described in Symphony of the Night as a creature of chaos. So, it's like it would always change up constantly and have like a lot of impossible architecture and everything in it. It's like the idea that it would be in any individual place is, is ridiculous. Usually that tends to be where Dracula is. Again, I love the dialogue in this game. Why would you even tell me about the whole trapping idea if you're just going to immediately walk away? <laughs> okay, as I thought. Save point right over here. I had to step away from recording for a second, but anyway, back in the clock tower. Uh, wherein we just found out that Graham apparently can no longer be trusted. Uh, but he seemed like such a good guy and was talking about all of Soma's favorite topics, like the predictions of Nostradamus and how they relate to the defeat of Dracula. Certainly seemed a lot nicer than Yoko, who continuously turns into enemies like disc armors, but... Well, that's just how it is. Frankly, I don't know why you're trusting anybody in Dracula's castle, but that's that's just how Soma do. He's a naive young boy. Oh well, perhaps he can take out his aggression against bomber armors? The natural progression of, of rocks. Bombs. Why not? Oh, and I did also get a couple extra souls since I was it did take a break there. Lightning Doll is the most interesting of them, doing not only a good amount of damage, but also helping me out with what would otherwise be a pretty difficult breakable wall to get into. As always, uh, the, the, the Peeping Eye Soul being MVP. And what do you got? Sure. I mean, only a little bit better, and maybe without the poison. Let's be honest, I don't know what it looks like when enemies get poisoned when they don't. This is definitely going to be better in one way or another, even if it's just because it's showing that I'm doing 69 damage, which is just, just fantastic. There we are. <laughs> lot, a lot, lot of mana used, but oh well. I think that it's, it's worth the price of admission. Yeah, the lightning dolls themselves, not really quite the same thing. Yeah, I do have to say that, like, in general, I do think that a lot of the the souls so far, I think maybe Dawn of Sorrow maybe had more interesting ones, or maybe I'm just remembering a lot of a lot of uh, uh, stuff that from Bloodstained, but these ones are all pretty uninteresting. Just uh, shoot out a projectile, isn't it? I mean, the thing with, like, katanas versus, man. No, I don't have any more mana. Uh, the thing with, like, getting a bunch of uh, katana shot out versus a bunch of, like, knives shot out, yeah, there's not too much of a difference. The one soul that I got from the... Actually, no, it, that the one... I was going to say the one soul that I got from the... The protoplasm, or whatever it was called, could be useful. Ectoplasm could be useful here, but I'm thinking about it now, and it's like, no, no, not so much, because that's curse, not, uh... Not petrification. Like, Catablepus doesn't do that. I meant it's like the Gorgon soul that I would need to be immune to getting stoned, but... Well... 
that's kind of out of my reach. It takes forever to kill that thing. Oh, man. Well, that worked out okay. That said, uh, well, I s before I go into new areas, I guess I should probably go see what's in the upper part of the clock tower first. There's no way they're going to let me just walk out of here without fighting a boss, after all. It's the clock tower. Also, another good place to, say, go uh, grind out some souls from former boss type of characters. Great armor appearing in a pretty nice and easy to, to approach area. Even gives you um, a large hearts coming from this thing, right? Yeah, I guess every time. Maybe that's the difference between the lighting fixtures. <laughs> I actually don't know. But yeah, when it just requires two smacks of that, or well, two smacks if I can hit him twice, that'll be tr pretty trivial to farm that up. Uh, well, s same thing here too. Ah, there's the boss. I knew it. And there's also a save point, which I can really use right now. Well, let's go for it. Probably gonna want to end up this episode soon enough, but hey, we got the classic clock tower. Oh, it's Death Fight. I didn't even realize that this was the Death Fight. Classic part of anyone, a uh, classic part of a, a full Castlevania breakfast. One of the, usually the most difficult of enemies to fight, even back in the OG Castlevania. So, no surprise that, uh... And uh, considering that this whole uh, vignette that I'm currently in right now is just a very part, a very classic part of Castlevania period. This sort of a view of, of the, the clock tower and everything. Still, usually, like, especially in the in the later Castlevania games, death gets, like, a, um, cutscene or something. Very cute. Ah! Hey, come on. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Don't really remember this fight too well, but so far it's pretty cool. Okay. Easy enough to understand. I don't really have a whole lot of other things to heal up, but at least I got that tasty, tasty meat. That werewolf punch. Ah, maybe I should use a mind up because the lightning has been doing quite good so far. Restores all of your MP. I might just end up using that. We're, we are talking about fighting death right now, which I can probably just go and uh, duck underneath. But uh, you know what? We are talking about fighting death, so it's like. This would be the point in time to, yeah, really start using my stuff. There we are. And there you go. Yep, no, I do not regret uh, using all of my items there. It doesn't seem like it would have been too difficult to eventually figure out, like, what the proper way of, of fighting that dude would be, but why not just, you know, just smoke him if you got him. Neat. Uh, sure. I mean, there are certainly plenty of underwater places that I do need to go. I was kind of hoping for uh, maybe a different class of Castlevania ability that would mean that I don't have to have the flying armor equipped up at all points in time. Ah, well. I think that, you know, after beating death, I feel like, uh, pretty confident for taking on the rest of the game. So, next time, I'll be back with a lot more souls and hopefully, maybe confronting Graham? For real? 